Hey guys, James Martin here. Welcome back to another brand new video. You've probably seen a lot of the videos I've been posting and now you're wondering, well, you know what, James? I really want to make a movie, but I have no idea how to start making a movie. Where do you begin? How do you start? What questions should you be asking? What's the first thing you even do when you decide to make a movie? Right now in this video, I'm going through all the little basics to help you figure out how to make your movie from start to finish with absolutely no experience and perhaps you have very little money and resources to work with. And we're going to go through this entire process together. The list I'm just about to go through can apply to any project, any budget, any size. The first thing you need to focus on is you absolutely need a script. And I know this sounds obvious, but it becomes very tempting that you have a very incomplete script and therefore you get going on your movie. I've made this mistake so many times. Don't do this because what's going to happen is as you're writing your script, you're inevitably going to make some changes and that change will affect how you make your movie, right? You may want, you might have already finished your casting and then you decide, oh, you know what? I want to add another character, right? Or you give your cast a script may decide to change it on them that's not a great way to go about it you want to have a very solid script and a solid plan right from the get-go i mean you're already going to be under enough stress trying to make the movie the last thing you want to worry about is making the movie and writing it at the same time just take one simple step at a time take your time be patient get your script done and complete so then you can move on to the next step which is actually making your movie once you have a script, the next thing you gotta start thinking about is schedule and budget. Now, I do have a video out that talks about scheduling. I have that in the cards and the description down below. But basically, you're gonna figure out what your end goal is. When do you want your premiere? Is this for a film festival? What is the deadline for your movie? And then you're gonna work backwards. So maybe you wanna plan on getting this movie done, I don't know, six months from now, 12 months from now, whichever. Figure out what that date is. That's the final date no exceptions, you hand in the movie or you get the movie done to wherever it needs to get done and work backwards from there. So you start figuring out, all right, so if we shoot by then, then the movie should be completed maybe the day before, maybe a couple days before just to be safe. So then we gotta start editing by this date, we gotta start shooting by this date, and then we can start pre-production by this date and get all the individual things down together. So plan as far in advance as you can and start figuring out when everything's gonna start taking place. When you start budgeting, this is also important. You gotta solidify a plan as to how much money you have, how much is that gonna to go towards your movie. And again, I've made the same mistake before. What you don't wanna do is just kinda of guess like, okay, well, I happen to have like 500 bucks in my account, so I'll just spend all that or just, we'll go about it, we'll see how it is. If I need more money, maybe I'll ask my parents, maybe I'll ask a friend, maybe I'll ask a relative for birthday money doesn't matter no don't do that solidify a plan so let's say your your budget is okay I'm gonna spend $500 no more no less spend $500 chances are this is gonna become your own personal money unless you do let's say a crowdfund like a Kickstarter for instance but whatever that number is stick to it like glue the worst thing you can do is overspend your money so figure out what that number is, stick to it, and be organized when you budget out your project. And if you need help budgeting your movie, guess what? I have a video on that too, up in the cards and the description down below. The next step you wanna think about is your crew and your cast. Who do you wanna bring on? Do you wanna do this alone? If you do wanna bring on people, who should you get? Now, if you do wanna do this completely by yourself, you'd be the only crew and cast, that's fine, but I'm just letting you know, you're gonna be so stressed out, it's not even funny how stressed out, and it's gonna knock all the fun out of the filmmaking. Now, that being said, if you are gonna shoot the movie by yourself, I would highly, highly recommend you do not become super ambitious. Make the shoot as simple as possible. Maybe it's one or two different locations, maybe a couple scenes, maybe a few pages. I would still recommend bring on some actors if you can. Find people who enjoy acting, whether it's your friends, family, or if you can bring people from your community, keep it as simple as humanly possible. And you can still shoot a movie, but just keep it really, really simple. Otherwise, if you get too ambitious, it will cause you a lot of stress and a lot of problems. I mean, when we did Finding the Light of Natha, I deliberately made a choice that I was gonna do a majority of the work, from shooting, to logistics, to the art, to a lot of different things, even to post-production. I would still highly recommend, see if you can find friends or family who can take care of some of the smaller tasks. Like, 
maybe you don't bring food, but maybe someone is willing to bring food for you. Or if you buy the groceries, someone might be able to bring the groceries for you or make a meal for lunch or dinner or whichever. Um, I would recommend that you pay for the groceries, but that's completely up to you. See if someone could help you out with driving. See if someone could help you move stuff, you know, and be patient, be very nice about it, ask politely, and just see if someone can at least relieve you of the small task you can take care of the big important stuff. Let's say you want to bring on a crew, but you don't know any actual filmmakers and crew people that you can bring on. My biggest advice, don't think so much about the positions, think about the tasks at hand. So for instance, maybe you're like, oh, but I don't know who's a sound recordist which is the person that actually records all the audio on set. Well, that's fine. Think about the task. Is someone, could someone hold a microphone or a recorder close enough to just record the audio? Simple as that. Some, can someone be listening to the audio to make sure that everything sounds clean? I'm willing to bet that you probably know at least one person that could do a job like that, right? Or same with, maybe you have a friend who's not what you would call a cinematographer or a director of photography, but maybe they enjoy taking pictures and they take pretty good pictures. Let them handle the camera work because they have at least an idea of what, of what they're doing. Maybe you know a friend who enjoys doing makeup. Bring them on to do makeup. They don't necessarily have to be what you call a makeup artist, but if they know how to make your actors look pretty, bring them on. If they know how to help with hair and uh, wigs or something like that, bring them on board. Right? Again, think about, okay, what tasks need to get done? And then find people who have talents and skills specifically for that task. Don't so much worry about the position. That can come later because there are going to be some people who are good at dealing with very specific jobs and very specific tasks and positions. Same with, do you know friends who love acting, whether it's theater or movies, whichever? Bring them on board and cast them. Okay, you can, I bet that you do have people in your friends and family who are good at certain jobs that can help you with these kind of things. It's about the people that you have available already to you and then strategically finding who fits what job. That being said, if you can bring on professionals, if you can bring on people who have been on other sets, other filmmakers who do know what they're doing and have done that specific job many, many times, do so. Now, when you're casting your cast, my biggest advice, again, because you're working on this most likely by yourself or with a very small crew, and this is gonna be one of your very first experiences, keep it as simple as possible. That's really the best advice I can give you. So maybe have one or two actors maximum. You know, just find the people that you know, decide who you want them to play, you know, what characters are they going to portray, and then give them the script and then let them do their thing. It's not really a complicated setup, just find some people you want to bring on. Next, look at the equipment that you have available. I often say that I think a lot of people sort of underestimate what they actually have available to them. I mean, listen, if you have a phone, you already have a camera. Simple as that. And your phones record audio too. If at the very bare minimal, this is what you have as your equipment, use it. It's not gonna hurt you, you know? If you have a secondary phone available, have this phone record the camera and then have your secondary phone record the audio. Just put on the voice memo and have someone hold it up as close as possible so that you get the best quality audio possible. Do you have lamps? Well, lamps are meant to give off light. You don't have to use the lights like I'm using right now. Just use that. They give off light, so use that. And that being said, if you have anything else that's better, use that too. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to look at your art breakdown. So what's going to happen is you're going to go through your entire script or whoever's handling the art is going to go through your entire script and break down all the individual aspects you need for your story. So you're breaking down the costumes, props, and props are essentially the things that the actor touches. The set, again, keep this simple. Don't create anything. Outdoors is perfect. Inside a place you already have access to is also great. Look at the special makeup. Again, keep this simple and something that your makeup artist can handle. So you're just going through this and just seeing all the different aspects that you need to collect, write a list, 
think about, okay, what do we need to start collecting? And then go ahead, start collecting the various costumes, props, all that kind of stuff. Next, and this is especially important if this is your very first time or one of your first movies you're gonna be making, is rehearsals and camera tests. So a rehearsal allows you to work with your actors and have a run through the script. So you get to hear them say the lines. This is important because they're becoming comfortable with saying the lines with each other. You're hearing the lines being said from your actors themselves for the very first time. Plus you can do what's called blocking. Blocking is when you're figuring out the actions and the movement that your actors are gonna be doing in a scene. Schedule a time to hang out with your actors and go over the script. Again, this is their chance to try saying the lines and to each other. And this is the time where you get to see your actors saying the lines for the first time. Work with the actors and let them know what you want from them, what their motivation is, and how you want them to say the lines. Make sure you're patient, make sure you're kind, and then try some camera tests. And especially if you're not familiar with cameras, if you're not familiar with how to shoot and make a movie, this is a perfect example to practice. This is your chance to practice different lighting setups, different camera shots, to find exactly what you need. Go to a location, take your camera, and just get the various different shots that you need. Take this time to practice and find the angles as well. Let's say you're trying to capture a specific lighting setup. Well, experiment. Do that ahead of time so that when it comes to the shoot, you already know exactly where everything needs to go. So take the time, figure out what it is that you wanna do. On the recent movie I did, which is Finding the Light of Natha, I wanted a very specific look with my fog. I've never worked with fog before. I wanted to see how that looked on camera, how you wanted to light it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so when it came to the day of, I knew exactly what I was doing and we were able to bang out shots and I was super, super thrilled with how the shots looked like overall. But it's because I did that as a camera test, but I also knew ahead of time what that look was gonna be and how long it was gonna take for the fog to fill in the room. And more importantly, how long it was gonna take for the fog to disappear. So the more you can practice, the more prepared you'll be. And trust me, when we did Finding the Light of Natha, we did plenty of rehearsals. Everyone, we did at least two rehearsals with all the actors. One was offline, one was online. And then my two lead characters, I did a bunch of rehearsals with just them just to make sure that they were really comfortable with their lines. Now, while everyone is memorizing their lines, getting the equipment, practicing, getting props, all that fun stuff, now you need to start planning out the shoot and start getting some paperwork done. So this paperwork is stuff that you gotta get done as far in advance as possible. Do not do this the night before. I will be very angry. So what kind of paperwork are we talking about? So the first thing that you need to get done is what's called a shot list. This is very simply a list of all the shots that you need to do. Organize them by scene, count how many shots that you need in each scene, describe to yourself what each shot is about, wide shot, medium shot, what's it establishing, etc, etc, etc. Again, keep this as simple as possible, just do a small handful of shots if need be. If anything, I would suggest the most important thing that you need is your wide or your main coverage, and then maybe a couple shots of each of your actors. That's it. The more shots that you do, the more complicated it gets, and to be honest, the more shots you do, the less likely you are to get everything. And you really do need to focus on the most important down to the least, especially getting that main coverage. You can get inserts and all kinds of stuff later on. Next, you need to figure out a schedule or an agenda. This is when you're gonna figure out what is happening and when on the day of the shoot. Whether it's a whole day, two days, whichever, I hope it's no more than two days. Figuring out when you're gonna start shooting, when you're gonna start setting up, when you're shooting scene one or scene two and three and five and doing a lunch and doing dinner and whichever. Again, you plan that out so at least you know by the time you're about to shoot. And finally, what I would suggest you do is create a list of absolutely everything you need for your shoot. Be as be as super detailed as you can imagine. Just do this ahead of time so that way when it comes to the day before your shoot and even the morning of, you just know exactly what you have to bring. And that way you're not running around trying to remember everything that you need to bring and then you end up forgetting, let's say, your batteries. This is the more stuff you do ahead of time to prepare you for 
when it's hard to really think and you're under the pressure. Hey guys, I just want to interrupt this video just for a quick sec to let you know that this video is brought to you by Honey.com. Honey is a free Chrome extension that you can add right to your Google Chrome website with just two simple clicks. So what Honey does is next time you go shopping online, Honey goes out all over the internet and looks for the best discounts and coupons to add to your total price. And if it doesn't recommend any special coupons or discounts, that means you're already getting the best price anyways. Link to get Honey is down in the description below. So now let's get back to the video. Now we're at our shoot date. So everything's gonna come together and you're gonna finally start shooting your movie. Best advice I can give you, first off, do not freak out. You're going to be under a lot of stress, a lot of things you're gonna be thinking about. Don't worry about it, just deal with everything just one little bit at a time. Don't get rude to anyone and just calmly get each shot and performance. Stay within your schedule. Don't take any longer than you absolutely need to. Again, remember to schedule in the agenda. Same idea, if you're, meant to, if you're meant to have lunch by 12, make sure you have lunch by 12. If you're meant to wrap up a scene by let's say 3 p.m. before you start moving on to the next scene, don't go over time because you wanna cram in a few more shots, finish by three, and then move on. Because when you start backing up a few scenes, you're gonna start backing up the entire day. Finally, and I just wanna set your expectations here not to scare you, but you will make mistakes. It's going to happen, and that's fine. Don't worry about it. You're learning, that's the big thing. So yeah, maybe you may not get a performance the way you like it, or maybe a shot doesn't turn out the way you like it, or maybe you run out of time. That's fine. Don't panic, don't freak out. Mistakes happen to everyone, like literally everyone. That's because you're learning and every experience is new. That's the fun thing about movies, right? It's not, is that not every project is the same. So if something happens, just deal with it the best you can. And again, the more calm and the more nicely you handle everything, the more likely that A, everything will go much smoother than you expected. And two, everyone's gonna be more willing to help you in the end. All right, now we're off to editing and this is where you're gonna start putting all your shots and stuff like that together. So the very first thing I would say to you is back up everything. And I would say back up not just to one place, back it up to at least two different locations. So what does that mean? You wanna have at least two copies of everything, your videos, your audio files, everything, including posters, your project files, documents, pictures, everything. Have at least two copies on two different hard drives. And this could mean either your computer and an external hard drive, or my advice, get two external hard drives and back them up to both of them. Because this creates sort of redundancies, right? Where let's say you have a hard drive that malfunctions, then you have another one as a backup because the likelihood of your two hard drives or both your computer and a hard drive breaking and an issue happening at the same time is very slim. Heck, I would even go further and say get a third backup, right? So maybe your computer and two external hard drives. It could be a computer, a laptop, and an external hard drive. Because what you don't want to do is back up everything, that's all your hard work, the entire shoot, back it up to one place, and then it malfunctions or the computer stops working. Don't do that to yourself. Be smart, create different backups. Do not back everything up online either. That doesn't count because something could happen online as well. Back it up to other hard drives and keep those hard drives safe. Do not break them. Next, use software that's free. And guess what? I happen to have a video on free editing software up there and in the description. Go check it out. There is free editing software out there. Now, if you wanna pay for something, by all means, go do that. But if you wanna save money, then this is where I recommend, and especially if you're just editing for the first time. Use music from a website where you can legally get music, all right? I don't want you to steal anything, all right? And if you want to know more free sites where you can get music for your movie, again, link in the cards and the description down below. I have you all prepared. And basically just find any free softwares you can use to help you make your movie. I wouldn't recommend buying anything Save that for another time when you know you're gonna make money from your movies. Right now, you're just trying to make one of your first few movies and just get that out there. Use a Microsoft software to make your poster. Use Pages or use an Apple software to make your music or to create your documents. Another way you can make your music or even do your sound effects is, I've often said, take the microphone on your phone and either make 
the sound effects yourself with your mouth or with other objects. Or maybe you play music yourself, whether it's guitar, piano, you sing. Make your own music. How fun. I'm actually doing that right now with Finding the Light of Natha. I'm actually writing the score and recording the music. I mean, I do a lot of music. That's what I'm comfortable doing. I want to experiment and try this for the first time. You could do this too. Why not? And it's free because you're the one that's doing it. And you can see if you like it. If you don't like it, then fine. Next time you make a movie, see if someone else can make your music. Or see if you can get music online. By this time, your movie is done. It's all edited. You have the sound effects, the music, color, whichever you want to do. It's all neat and what's called in the can. So now what? Well, the first thing I do is showcase that stuff. You have all sorts of family and friends who supported this project. Some of them even got involved and everyone wants to see this movie. Present it to a premiere, whether it's online or offline. You know, you can do all kinds of different things. I've seen kids do in-person premieres. I've seen all sorts of people do stuff online. But remember, you and the rest of your team, you guys work hard making this movie. Show it. Have fun. This is your time to get back and enjoy what you just made. Put it on DVD. Give copies to the people who are involved in your project. Give it to other people who supported you. Upload it online. Share it to the world. Put it on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook. Show it to everyone. And also, finally, make sure you have a link to your movie. Post it in the comments so that I can watch your movie as well. And there you have it. That's how you essentially make a movie from start all the way to finish. And especially if you've made absolutely nothing beforehand. And this is one of your very first times making a movie. So... I hope it helped you out, and if it did, please smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe because i got so many great videos coming out every single week that can also really help you improve your filmmaking game, all right? Make sure you comment down below any questions that you have before you go on and shoot a movie, anything that you're not sure about, and again, send me your movies, all right, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook, send me links to your movies so that I can check it out and even let you know my own thoughts, okay? Good luck with your shoot. Have fun. I mean, making a movie is tons of fun. That's why I do it, right? So, good luck with your project. I'll see you next time.